the business tycoon who just so happens to be a raccoon, it's Tom Nook from the Animal Crossing series. For those of you who are unfamiliar with Tom Nook, he made his first appearance in the game Animal Crossing, which originally released on the GameCube in 2001. Tom Nook is a businessman who owns a large company called Nook Inc., and is also responsible for giving the player proper instructions on how to earn money to pay for your house and getting to know your neighbors as well as all the services that are provided in the place you're staying. Despite sounding like such an important character, not a lot of Animal Crossing fans are quite fond of Tom Nook. This is probably due to the fact that Tom Nook has a slight greed problem and tends to overprice things that normally should be cheap. Even still, Tom Nook is considered to be the face of Animal Crossing, alongside Isabel and K.K. Slider. And today, Tom Nook will be getting into business as he fights the various mascots on the Super Smash Bros. roster. So starting off, Tom Nook would be a below average midway class fighter, being slightly heavier than Villager or Isabel. Unfortunately, that would also mean he'd be a slow fighter. He'd have two jumps and no other movement options. But now, let's dive into the costumes. Well actually before that, this video is sponsored by StreamStation PC. For those of you who've never heard of StreamStation PC, StreamStation PC is a website that sells PC equipment, but not just any PC equipment. Each PC here is custom made and was made with gaming in mind. These are high quality gaming PCs that can run up to 60 frames per second and even supports 4K resolution. So if you'd like to order a custom made gaming PC, head on over to StreamStationPC.com. And if you'd like to get a small discount while simultaneously supporting my channel, then use the promo code on screen. And now, back to the video. Okay, now let's dive into the costumes. For Tom Nook's default appearance, He'll wear his iconic New Horizons getup from the most recent game, Animal Crossing New Horizons. Then for his first alt, he wears his sweater from Animal Crossing New Leaf. For his second alt, Tom Nook goes retro and wears his Nook Inc. work apron from the first and second Animal Crossing games. Then for his third alt, he gets yet another New Horizons costume, but this time he's wearing his fall and winter attire. Now for his fourth alt, his New Horizons shirt turns pink, which would be in reference towards the most famous Animal Crossing character to date, Isabel. Specifically her appearance from New Horizons. Next for his fifth alt, his New Leaf sweater turns blue. This would be in reference towards Tom Nook's Nookington attire from Animal Crossing City Folk. For his sixth alt, Tom Nook's fur color changes to orange and white. This is in reference towards Red the Fox, who is supposedly Tom Nook's business rival. In the final alt, we'll have Tom Nook's coat and pants turn red and blue, which references Lottie the Otter, Tom Nook's receptionist from Animal Crossing Happy Home Designer. Oh, and speaking of her... Lottie the Otter will be joining Tom Nook as his Echo Fighter. Lottie is a businesswoman who works for a house modeling company known as Happy Home Academy. She is one of the most hardworking employees there, which is why I'm certain she was relocated to an island in the DLC of New Horizons called Happy Home Paradise to be the head of that branch. Now in terms of differences, there aren't too many differences in their attacks, but rather their personalities. She's also a lot lighter and faster than Tom Nook, but she's also not as strong as he is, so keep that in mind when selecting her. Anyways, for Lottie's default appearance, she'll be in her iconic red suit from Happy Home Designer. For her first alt, she'll wear her New Horizons dress from Happy Home Paradise. Then for her second alt, Lottie gets the color schemes of one of her best friends, Isabel. 
For her third ult, Lottie's dress turns orange, which is Smash original. Then for her fourth ult, Lottie's red suit turns a tealish green color. This is in reference towards Tom Nook's sweater from Animal Crossing New Leaf. For her fifth ult, Lottie's dress turns green, again, a Smash original. For her sixth ult, Lottie's suit turns blue with a hint of green. This is in reference towards the singing sea turtle everyone loves, Cap'n. And the final alt will have Lottie in a turquoise colored dress, which yet again is Smash Original. Now with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and dive into the moveset. Now just like Villager and Isabelle's entire moveset, Tom Nook and Lottie will be mostly fighting using various objects from the Animal Crossing series. So starting off with a neutral jab, it can be a one-hit spamble jab that works just like Isabelle's jab. However, instead of Tom Nook using a squeaky hammer, Tom Nook will be using one of his most prized possessions, bells. In Animal Crossing, bells are the necessity to pay Tom Nook. Really, you can't go throughout the entirety of the game without owning at least a little bit of bells. In fact, get used to me mentioning bells now everyone, because a lot of Tom Nook's attacks will be utilizing bells. For Lottie, the moves will visually change. Instead of using bells for most of the moveset, Lottie will use her company's currency known as Pokey. Pokey is basically the same as bells, but you can only use Pokey at Happy Home Academy on locations. This is truly the big reason as to why I made Lottie an Echo Fighter for Tom Nook. For the side tilt, Tom Nook and Lottie will sweep the opponents right off of their feet. And I mean that quite literally, as they both will be using a broom to hit the opponents. It reaches pretty far, but it isn't quite strong. On the bright side, the opponents can trip if they were hit by the end of the broom, but only if they were at early percentages. For the down tilt, Tom Nook and Lottie will pluck a weed from the ground. Despite seeming like Villager and Isabelle's down tilt, it's a lot stronger than theirs. For the up tilt, Tom Nook and Lottie equip a Nook Ink umbrella and spin it a few times, dealing multiple hits of damage until the final hit. Now for the smash attacks, two of these smash attacks will have Tom Nook use his most favorite employees, Timmy and Tommy Nook. So for his forward smash, Timmy or Tommy will throw themselves forwards. This is a very strong smash attack, but there is a little bit of start lag and a lot of end lag. Now if you're playing as Lottie, the move will change. Instead of using Timmy or Tommy, she'll simply use a party popper and pop it. Yes, this is added the same forward smash that Isabel has, but the key difference here is that this one's slightly stronger, but has a little bit more end lag. For Tom Nook's down smash, Timmy and Tommy run in opposite directions of Tom Nook. Timmy and Tommy can travel pretty far compared to normal, but that also means this attack ends with a lot more end lag. For Lottie's down smash, she'll equip a broom and rapidly sweep the floor around herself. This smash attack is unique in that foes can be dragged in and deal multiple hits of damage until the final hit. Unfortunately, it does have a little bit of start lag and a little bit of end lag. For their up smash, both Lottie and Tom Nook equip a slingshot and shoot a small projectile upwards. This smash attack is pretty weak compared to the other smash attacks, but it has no end lag and reaches a pretty long distance. For Tom Nook's neutral air, Tom Nook spins a single time. Despite spinning, he only launches foes on impact. For Lottie's neutral air, she'll mimic Isabelle's neutral air and spin a single time while equipping a pair of pom-poms. For their forward and back air, Tom Nook and Lottie equip a slingshot and shoot a small projectile into either of those directions. It reaches pretty far, but doesn't have a whole lot of launch power. And finally, for the up and down air, it'll be yet another parallel to Villager and Isabelle's up and down air. However, instead of turnips, Tom Nook will hold bags of bells and Lottie will hold bags of pokey. But where Tom Nook and Lottie mean business is with their special attacks. For Tom Nook's neutral special, Tom Nook will pocket any projectile or item that is near him. Hey my goodness, you're so lazy! You couldn't even give him a unique special move! Why not just make him an Echo Fighter for Villager and no, Isabel? No, 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 I'm not finished yet. Once Tom Nook pockets something, he has two options. His first option is to simply empty his pocket and hold or throw the thing he pocketed by pressing the special button again. However, his second option will be much more rewarding. And I mean that quite literally, as he'll actually sell the item he pocketed. In order to sell a pocketed item, you need to press both the shield and special button at the exact same time. Once pressed, Timmy and Tommy will appear and give Tom Nook some bells. There are quite a bit of things you can do with these bells. First of all, these bells are capable of making Tom Nook's neutral attacks much more stronger than usual. 
His neutral jab, up and down air also get greatly strengthened, and the amount of belt bags that appear will change depending on how many belts you have. Second, the more belts he has, the heavier he'll become, meaning that he'll be harder to launch. And third, the main purpose of belts is to buy stuff, which is what his down special is for. Once the down special is activated, a small select screen appears above Tom Nook's head. This small screen shows Tom Nook what items are currently available. Now all the items are the actual items in Smash, like the Starman, Pokeballs, and food, with each item having their own pricing. However, each item is randomly generated, so it won't always be the same item every time you open it. Even if items are turned off, these will always be selectable. In order to see how many bells you have, there's a meter above Tom Nook's fighter display, with the most amount of bells being 1000. The meter also slowly fills 5 bells every second, so you don't always have to sell projectiles or items to fill up the meter. However, it does help if you do that, and you'll get more bells depending on what you pocketed. Here's a quick mock-up showing you exactly the estimated amount for each item or projectile. Now for Lottie's neutral and down special, it will be the exact same specials given to Tom Nook. However, instead of receiving bells, she'll obviously be receiving Pokey. And instead of Timmy and Tommy appearing to trade the item or projectile, it'll be the lovable monkey known as Nico, who happens to work for Lottie in Happy Home Paradise. Now for the side special, Tom Nook and Lottie will equip one of the most recent items from New Horizons, called the Vaulting Pole. This move has a wide variety of uses. First of all, it has the ability to move Tom Nook or Lottie forwards. Second, if it's used in the air, the pole reaches a farther distance, meaning that foes can get hit from below. And third, when Tom Nook and Lottie move forwards, their bodies become a moving hitbox, so foes bumping into them will be sent flying. As versatile as this move sounds, there are a few issues with it. It really only works on the ground. It doesn't work over the edge of the stage or really in the air. And finally, for the up special, it'll be the same up special that was given to Isabel, where both Tom Nook and Lottie swing on a small swing while being lifted into the air by a bunch of balloons. In order to ascend into the air, you need to press the special button again for as many times as you want until the balloons pop, either by you pressing the special button too much, or if an opponent attacked them. But unlike Isabelle's, the amount of balloons and how high Tom Nook and Lottie can go will be dependent on how many bells and pokey they have. Plus, the balloons themselves will actually change. If you're Tom Nook, the balloons will take on a bell shape, whereas if you're Lottie, it'll change into a pokey shape. If they're running low on bells and pokey, then they only get one balloon, which pops the quickest after only three swings. Or in this case, three taps of the special button. If they have about 500 bells or pokey, then they get three balloons, which can pop after about nine swings. And finally, if they happen to have their bell or pokey meter completely filled up to a thousand, they get five balloons, which can handle a total of 15 swings. This move doesn't cost the player any bells or pokey, so feel free to use this move without worrying about your wallet. And now, for the final smashes. Tom Nook's final smash will be... Nook's Crane. For this final smash, Tom Nook gives Timmy and Tommy Nook all of his bells and proceeds to build his shop known as Nook's Cranny. If a foe happens to be nearby, they'll get sucked in and deal large amounts of damage and knockback while being trapped inside of the house. Once Nook's Cranny is completely built, it explodes, dealing a large amounts of damage and knockback ending the final smash. Now if you're playing as Lottie, the final smash will change to Happy, Happy Home. Home. This final smash plays out just like Tom Nook's final smash, but this time she's assisted by Nico and Wardle and builds one of their Happy Homes instead of a store. As a little side note, the house's design will change every time you use the final smash. Depending on how many bells or pokey you had when using these final smashes, the damage dealt to all opponents will increase. These Final Smashes reference both Tom Nook and Lottie's general plans of expanding. The stage of choice is called New Horizons. This stage's layout is reminiscent of the Smashville stage, where it's one large floating stage with occasional platforms. Sometimes items that have balloons on top will appear, and if you pop the balloons, you'll get an item. Despite those similarities, there are a few key differences. First of all, the cameos in the background are the various new villagers from New Horizons. Second, the stage's background will move from one island to another. Sometimes you'll see Dodo Airlines flying one of their planes, and other times you'll see Cap'n sailing the seas while singing his song. 
Also, if it happens to be a Saturday night, KK Slider will actually show up on stage. Not only that, but all the songs that play on that stage will be strictly his own songs. As most people know by now, Animal Crossing's music is too relaxing to add as is, so a lot of the songs I'll be playing will have to be remixed for Smash. In total, 14 songs would be included, 13 of which would be remixed. And that would be if Tom Nook and Lottie the Otter joined Super Smash Bros. Fun fact, this video was actually planned all the way back last year during the holiday seasons. I eventually put this video on hold during that time as I wanted to hype up the release of the Super Mario Bros. movie. But after I started putting out more Smash Moveset videos after the movie came out, I wanted to talk about Tom Nook so badly. And I figured that since it's close to the holiday seasons, it was the perfect opportunity to do so. Anyways, do you have a character you'd like to see be given a Smash moveset? If so, let me know in the comments down below. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe? That way you can get notified when I put out any Super Smash Bros. moveset videos. As always, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. <laughs>